Everybody, it's Tyler here at Chessie Champs, checking in team number 2135, presentation Invasion coming out of California. And I'm here with Shweta, Anitha, and Christine. And we're going to be talking about uh, the super unique robot here at Chessie Champs. A couple things I haven't seen before, really awesome, cool intake, might be inspired by a team, but I really want to focus on the shooter. They're one of the few teams that have a wide shooter, but it's actually been very accurate as well, too, something that uh, I think has been really neat to see. We're talking about their climber and all their mechanisms all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. We'd also like to thank Kettering University. Kettering University is where robotic students come for their education. Over 30% of those who attend Kettering University were in high school robotics, and you can keep going with their BattleBots, VexU, eSports, and FIRST mentorship programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. So starting out, you're going to be running us through your intake. Talk to me a little about uh, some of the design process, uh, maybe what iterations you've gone through, and of course, what it's actually composed of as well. Yeah, so um, our intake here, um, we have a pneumatic that runs it, and then um, basically it extends out of the bumper, and that's how um, we can intake uh, five balls here. We basically have three rows of um, two-inch compliant wheels um, that are intaking. Um, we have a few support structures here. Um, I think the main thing with the intake that we've gone through is just really securing it because sure. it's getting hit all the time. Um, so just making sure all these connections, shaft color is all good. Um, making sure that the bearings are in. Um, so yeah, that's like most of the process we've been through. We have a um, sim motor and uh, yeah, that's the intake. Basically. Can we actually see the intake come down yeah, and see yeah. maybe like a power cell yeah. brought in? Would that be all right? Um, and as we're doing that, uh, can you talk to me a little about uh, some of this material that's on the inside where these wheels are as well? Is that just all 3D printed? Uh, the blue yes, material? Yes, we actually do have 3D printed spacers here cool. on the edge here. Yeah, yeah, let's see the intake come down. We'll take a look on that. So it's like a lawnmower, yep. essentially, as it comes through. That's really cool. Can we grab a power cell and check that out? Can we feed this one through right here? Is that yeah, all right? for sure. I'll let you do that, so. Actually, I will say there's one more thing. Um, we had one issue with, originally, we didn't have this uh, row of spacers over here. Sure. So um, we had a lot of power cells kind of flying out of the top that got stuck in there. So we this was one of the iterations that we added recently. So we just had another 3D printed plate. And um, it's filled with spacers here um, and basically just holds it in so that the power cells can't roll back out. Yeah. And they all spin so they can roll back in. Yeah. That's awesome here. Well, that's a great transition to go into your hopper area and talking more about that. So, uh, of course, when you're talking in super wide hopper area, this probably hold what, 15, 20 power cells. So in case they modify the game, right? I get the future planning. So, uh, but talk to me more about uh, just what's gone into this as we go into your shooter. So basically this is our floor conveyor and these spin and these basically suck in the power cells from the intake and lead them into the vertical conveyor. And then this hopper is just a store. So usually as you said, these can store a lot of yeah. this can store a lot of power cells, but usually we just store five. And then eventually, when the shooter is activated, then these get sucked in, and then they shoot. Um, with uh, this type of like uh, poly bell or poly cord they're using, uh, a lot of teams that we've seen that have had super long ones have either they've kind of frayed or broken yeah. or anything like that. Have you had any issues with that? And then uh, has it has it been uh, just something that's worked really well for you? Nope, this has actually worked really well. We worked on this over the summer, and this has been this has stayed pretty much the whole time. So as we go up into uh, the rest of this uh, intake area, this hopper area, you guys have a lot more compliant wheels. Uh, you might you might take the record for uh, compliant wheels on a robot, by the way. But uh, talk to me about uh, how your indexing works, uh, if you're using uh, anything to get those balls or sense those balls as well. Yeah, so our shooter is composed of two rows of flywheels. This is, um, this is the row that kind of feeds into our main flywheel that we shoot with. And if you notice, um, we in Cal Games, which we competed two weeks ago, yeah. um, we only implemented a flashlight for vision um, in order to able to be able to shoot accurately. Um, but since those two weeks, we've actually implemented our limelight, so that gives us accurate shooting, both when we're doing autonomous paths and um, when we're trying to shoot IntelliUp as well. 
Uh, what type of motors are you using to actually uh, power the shooter? And then in particular, when you're looking at that double wide, uh, when you're thinking about the game itself, what made you want to choose uh, something where you could just like shoot multiple power cells potentially at once? Yeah, so I think that's definitely something that um, makes us stand out against other robots yeah. um, because we're able to be able to um, shoot multiple balls at once. Um, and that's basically kind of the main aim of our robot, um, to be able to, fa to shoot really quickly and accurately um, with multiple power cells inside. So do you know what type of uh, motor you're using to uh, shoot these, actually? So we have, um, we have two Falcons attached, one to the first row of um, the, the shooter and then um, another one for the top row as well. Sure. Well, let's continue on uh, on this robot. Uh, let's cover the climber first, and then we'll go into uh, uh, anything else on this robot. Uh, so climber-wise on it, looks like a multi-stage assembly. Tell me a bit more about what's going on. Yeah, basically it's just a two-stage telescoping climber. Um, yeah, it does have constant four springs. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's been, it's worked very consistently for us. I think that's been probably our, um, one of our best features of the robot. We've done a lot of double climbs, triple climbs, very exciting. Um, and yeah, it's 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 two stages. Um, we, I think, one of the iterations that we had done ourselves um, was basically just to keep this rope on sure. on this winch. Um, and basically, we had to. Originally, we had like a, a smaller plate here, and then we just designed one that kind of holds it stronger. Because in this in this climber, we just. We just wanted to, every, it's pretty simple, but we just have to make sure that everything is all. Have you experienced with this type of climber for other teams that I've seen with that? Uh, they actually are able to climb with just one arm and potentially, yeah. have you had that happen in matches? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can climb with one arm. It's happened before too. Usually not on purpose, I'm guessing. Not on but, purpose, all right, but, <laughs> but we're, we're very confident when it does happen because yeah. it, it's been consistent, yeah. Well, presentation uh, in Beijing, uh, once again, coming out of California, 2135. Thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot here. Uh, as we're filming this, we're uh, getting ready for playoffs, so good luck uh, looking in the future of that. But can't wait to see where your team comes up in future seasons as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Don't just sit in class. Kettering University is the only school in the U.S. that allows you to work as an engineer your first year with their three-month-on, three-month-off co-op programs. If you are a U.S. student grades 8 through 12, scan the QR code to stay up to date on info and events happening at Kettering and get a free Kettering t-shirt when you sign up by December 12, 2021. We'd like to thank Stryker for their continued support of First Updates Now. Stryker's internship portal is now open and available. Discover internships and rotational programs located around the world, including their headquarters in Michigan, when you go to careers.stryker.com and click on Students and Graduates. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.